or showing or potential clients are offering or saying, you know, I will buy this, have something. Even if it's as simple as a offered offer to buy services from a customer saying, I would like to buy your services once you've got your business up and running. Something that proves the potential of your business is pretty important. And prove you can execute it. Every step of your investment cycle, whenever someone gives you money, you've got to execute at least close to where you promised them. You know, and, and because if you don't, why would they put more money next time? You know, if you promise if you promise a million in revenues after 12 months, you take enough money to last 12 months, and after 12 months you made 50,000, you're so well off the mark, you're probably not going to get another round of funding. But if you come in at 700, okay, it's not too bad, let's give another round. You, you, you know, investors are understanding, they're forgiving, if you give it your best shot and you've actually gotten close. But when you're way off the mark, it's just, it's just bad. So execution is key. Um, yeah. Structure and for rapid growth, what, what's it going to start the last quick growth? So, how do you build a quick growing business? Uh, choice of ideas, choose you know, come up with an idea that's unique, novel, and, and targets the existing market. Be disruptive, things that uh, you know, take, take the pain out of the, out of the <coughs> situation for someone, make it easier for them to do it, make it cheaper. To find out, depending on what you're trying to do, what is it, what idea, that, you know, what idea you have, why would someone choose you over someone else? Choice of people, you know, it's very easy to fall into a trap where you're so desperate to hire someone because everything's collapsing, you need that one extra person to help with something to make a bad hiring decision. It's very easy to make that mistake. I've made it a couple of times. When you're so desperate just to, to, to have someone to release the steam in the business that you just, you know, this person's good enough. Interview 30 people for a job. That's the best way to do it. Get a broad number of candidates. Uh, don't just interview three people and pick the best one. I mean, just, you can make this mistake, it's actually, it'll do more harm than good for your business. Finance, um, there are a lot of companies out there that finance uh, equipment for startup businesses. Spartan, I think a job does that. Uh, a lot of guys out there, you know, you think of finances, don't always think of investment. Think of better ways of structuring either it's cash flow, uh, so you, your debtors and creditors match them up. So, um, a lot of credit, a lot of your, your debtors, you can actually move them up. You can, Sorry, for creditors, you can move them up, you can ask them for 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, whatever it is. And initially they'll give you 15 days. And then after three months, you're following someone 30 days, and 45 days, and stretch it out. Try it, when you have a running business, um, try to get your, your creditors on longer terms as possible. That'll help finance your business. Uh, don't buy equipment cash, you know, finance it. And, and I know it's tough, and it, you know, sometimes, like guys like Spark, what they do is they do uh, refurbished computer finance. They supply refurbished computers, they have enough margin, they can take the risk, and they'll finance small businesses and startups on that. You know, look at those opportunities. Um, but be smart about your finances. Don't, you know, cash is not always king uh, for, for, for buying stuff. You, you should probably look at finances at times. Memories points. Uh, yeah, I don't, this is, this is a, this is a long topic. Um, but memories points to me the parts of your business that you you know, one, that you do have to worry about because you, you, it's a constraint, and the other one is um, the part of your business where it's going to allow you to, to scale up. So, uh, in our in the example of Yola, one of the leverage points of our business is once we get the product to the, the right spot, we can scale marketing. We know how to do that. We can buy a million dollars worth of advertising a month. What's preventing us from doing that? You work back, okay, well, our service can't handle that much traffic. Okay, fix that point. Uh, and, and, we don't make enough money per user because we're in our products. Okay, let's fix these things. Figure out what's going to create the leverage point in your business that's going to really explode this thing, and then work from there. What you need to do to get there? There's 20 deals ready to go, and um, all these clients want this product, but there's this one feature they don't have. Why are you not building that feature? Why are you not building that service? Figure out what is it's a theory of constraints. What's the what's the uh, what's the bottleneck in your business? And, and once you figure that out, it'll explode. Um, and uh, that's, 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 nothing I'm telling you is new. This is, uh, it's all, this is my personal perspective, but this is all in the, in the textbooks, management accounting, finance textbooks, you'll find this stuff there, um, some of it anyway. Um, but just having a good hands-on business approach often just is, is, is more than enough to get you through. And the rest is obviously up to you. But just be smart about these, these things here. This is, this, is, like, this is nothing new, but it needs to be done. I think that's, oh, okay. Whatever. <laughs> Has there been any questions so far? No?
Sporting events coming, and then it certainly happened in the US in 2001. 